I think the vision of the agency is as strong today as it was in that living room in 1980 when Bob and Ree and Jelbina and Pete started talking about what they wanted to see for the future of their children. You're gonna go, right? This oh. one? No. Okay. This one? Nope. Get your coat, sweetheart. Okay, here's your purse. At the time, uh, there were many parent groups starting agencies, and I had already worked with two agencies in the Monroe County area, so I was pretty confident that I could help Heritage to accomplish their goal. When Mark was 38 years old, uh, we knew we had to make plans for Mark but we didn't know what. Mark was involved in different programs, and, but my wife says uh, she was not happy with that, and she says, uh, we got to uh, start something that's more in line with Mark's home that he's living in. And Jobina said to us one day, you know, we've got to get together, we've got to meet, we've got to start um, thinking about what we're going to do uh, for our children in the future when we're not here. We all got together in our house here and we talked about it and uh, Bob says, well, I will first, I got to take a trip out to California. He said, they got homes out there that uh, I can look over and see ones, what, how they operate and see ones if, if, we, if we can duplicate some of that. When I went out to California, I visited the homes out there. I saw the people in action. I saw them at their dinner table. I saw them saying grace. I saw them uh, being able to recite things. And while they may be a little more higher function than the kids that we were initially serving, it was a situation where they seemed so comfortable doing it that it was just something that I felt that if they could do it, that we could do it. It's just a matter of determination. And that's where we really got started. Coat. The purple? Marie and Bob and uh, Jobina and Pete had a little different twist in terms of the kind of service that they wanted. And I thought they were very creative. In some ways, Bob was ahead of his time. He wanted it to have a religious uh, focus. Uh, he wanted the homes to be small. He wanted people to have single bedrooms, and he wanted it in the heart of the community so people could be part of an extended family. And that's where we started. And of course, we had to use the existing funding structure to make that happen, but um, they were very, very instrumental in uh, establishing some very beautiful residences and seeing many happy faces when they were opened. Who wants to go to church with me? Raise your hands. Yay! The devastating part to me was not that I had handicapped children, but what was their future going to be? And I found that the most depressing part of all because everything I looked at was just there was nothing there for them. And that just tore my heart out, you know, to think that these children, and if something happens to Bob and I, what is going to happen to them? Not an institution, hopefully. So I think that was our driving force, and I think, uh, you know, I think the same with the rest of the parents. It's like, where are they going to go? What is going to be? there for them and so I think that was our driving force that, to know that they were secure and had a good life as well as any of, of us had the, and our other children had that they were living as full and rich a life as possible. I thought Bob was extremely creative in uh, focusing on his Christian mission. One of the things he did was to make contact with local churches, uh, Christian churches that he believed could be uh, supportive philosophically, supportive financially, and also he knew that many of the churches had land that could possibly be used for building uh, homes. I had told the council that we were going to have visitors who were going to present an idea for using some of our property for an actual home. And so they said, well, you know, we'd be willing to listen and hear their story. And what impressed me was how 
the Brinsmas, the Peters, the Autos spoke, it, uh, it was just marvelous in the sense that they, they spoke of their love for their children and of uh, the, need, this kind, the need for this kind of a facility. And they, they realized that there, there might be some problems. Uh, people might you know, have different kinds of ideas about uh, persons with disabilities and so on. And the way in which they handled those questions, I think, was very, very significant and very impressive to me, and I know to the council, too. And it's what I'm sure uh, started the whole ball rolling. Come on. Where are we going? Are we going to church? Yeah. Yeah? Are we going to have fun? Yeah. Are we going to pray to Jesus? One of the things yeah. that we first talked about, with, that I first talked about with uh, the Peters and the Brunsmas was the fact that we had uh, community acceptance as an issue and when the group home um, started to be developed a law was passed it was called a site selection law which allowed group homes to be built in zoning for single-family homes so this was an area that Bob and his group had to tackle with their first home on Jennifer Lane the church council I think got on board very quickly uh, once they understood what was being asked of them and uh, the concept that was going to be used with, with the residents and so forth and the opportunity for the church to be involved with the residents, they were being able to attend worship here and perhaps to develop other programs uh, for them and so on. But then we sort of had to realize that this is a congregational church and before we can really do anything we had to get congregational approval. Most of the community backlash was, of course, from the neighbors that are fairly close. One from a couple of the neighbors on the Jennifer Lane uh, right away, uh, who in the long run turned out to be friends of the agency, uh, friends of the people that live there. But it was a natural concern, fear of the unknown, just who were we going to be, how were we going to keep the property up. And once we went through all that and with the support of the town board, which supported us, we just uh, were able to continue. But yeah, it was a tough time for some people, and it probably is even today, but I think that in the long run, uh, when they saw that we were not a threat to them, we would not be a part of their values of their homes decreasing, they felt comfortable at that point, as, as comfortable as they could be. During that time, there, there was, you know, there's always the excitement of, of something new that was going to happen. And, we began to realize that th there was an opportunity here for us to, to carry on a Christian ministry. This became an exciting time for us. And then we needed to have some kind of a symbol that represented our church being connected to Heritage Christian. And this is when the whole idea of a path or walkway between the church and the home uh, came to light. And, uh, so this was also something very special. And that having that walkway there is a, a, a living symbol of the relationship you know, between the church and Heritage Christian on Jennifer Lane. When we opened Jennifer Lane, it was an uh, opportunity for joy because we had finally succeeded in opening our first home. We had the funds to do it. The, uh, we know that their future was going to be secure at that point. But, you know, it, it was difficult, probably more difficult for the mother than for the father in my case, but because uh, I'm not supposed to show emotion as a guy, but boy, I'll tell you, it wasn't easy. And, uh, you know, I would sit at work and get tears and, you know, but I wouldn't let anybody see it, of course. And so I think that together we worked at it so that we could really celebrate the success of what would help the kids in the long run, and that was our main goal to begin with, and that's where we ended up. Uh, when my children moved into Jennifer Lane, it was such a mixture of emotions. Joy that we finally had found a future for them, but it, as a parent, the hard part of letting go, these children have been so dependent on you all their lives, and all of a sudden you're turning them over to peop other people for their daily care and needs and stuff. and. I think that's where it was so important in the agency that they always made us feel part of their home, that we always felt it was our home too. When I carried that suitcase, 
I was in tears. I was just devastated, you know, what am I doing to my uh, Lori, you know, and uh, I was quite upset. Not for putting her there, but just for losing her out of her own home, losing daddy's little girl. But I was so shocked within a few weeks how she totally changed to a young lady. And some of the things that she would say, I, for an example, they would be out and I said, Lori, you weren't home? She said, well, I'm busy. And she never did that at home. And she started talking and communicating with people and her speech started. It was just, I just couldn't believe it. It was the biggest favor I ever did for her was letting her live in heritage. If I kept her home, I would be, I would be hurting her by keeping her home. And uh, this was just a wonderful part of, it, of her life. She's a totally different young lady today than what she was at home. The day that Jennifer Lane opened was not just opening a house, it was opening a home for the people who were moving in. And as any of us have know when you're moving into a new home, it's very exciting. And for these individuals, it was more than that. They were moving on to a part of their life where they could be associated and part of a family, but it's a whole new adventure for them. Um, their lives were going to change forever. My relationship with the Brunsmas, Peters, the Autos has, has stayed with me ever since. And there's no question in my mind that as I confronted them, I was seeing people of faith living out in a real way their faith, what it's all about. Because I think in my own mind, uh, I had never had a lot of dealings with people with disabilities, and, and yet I'm a, a better person, a, a richer person, because I've had that opportunity. And I can only thank them for giving this church, really, that, that opportunity as well. And they have, I think, touched us, and certainly have touched me a great deal more than I've ever touched them, both the, the folks themselves and, and their parents. So it was a privilege. Bob's legacy the Ottos and Brunsmas and Marie, they have a, a, wonderful, uh, a wonderful agency that they built and they're, they're leaving to the betterment of our DD community.